Welcome to the third episode of the leadership series, where we are dealing with the most destructive leadership traits uh, in an organization, how to avoid them, and if they happen, how to correct or develop them. Today, we are going to speak on the third most destructive leadership trait, which is lack of direction. Um, many organizations and many leaders um, will confuse the direction of the organization, and some of them will actually have no direction. The question is, um, if an organization is led by a leader who is confused on uh, the direction, where they should be going, how would the organization move and how would the employees or the followers of the organization find the right uh, thing to do in the middle of um, absence of information and absence of uh, direction or guidance. So why does this happen and how to avoid uh, organizational lack of direction? So the first step of setting the direction is actually finding the goal. And when we mention goal setting, most of the organizations are after profit. Um, they want to be number one in what they are doing um, and they want to achieve excellence in several um, terms. However, the question here when we are talking about the goal setting is not about goal setting only for the organization, but it's actually goal setting of the leader himself. It starts from the leader because if you don't know where you're going, then the organization for you is a vehicle. The organization does not tell you the direction. The organization will tell you um, uh, um, the, the um, objectives uh, that they want to achieve in terms of financial measures, in terms of vision and mission, but they still remain as a vehicle. If the driver of the organization, who is the leader, does not drive the organization where they should be or that does not believe in the mission or the vision of the organization, how can a leader drive an organization to its desired uh, goal by the founders. Because if we look at organizations, organizations are not self-forming, they are formed by people and they are live and they are vibrant. In case an organization wants to reach a, a certain direction, this direction will be set by the founders of the organization. Now the, final, the founders of the organization are going to give this mission and vision to the next generation. So they are going to go from top, to, from the founders, all to the subsequent organ um, um, generations that are going to lead the organization in the future. So eventually, in the middle of this hierarchy or in the middle of this sequence of leadership, leaders will be hired to take the role. If those leaders do not believe in the vision and mission of the organization or think that they should drive somewhere else or a different way, then the here will, uh, confusion will occur. So goal setting here, what we mean by goal setting is what Stephen Covey mentioned in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Habit number two was think with the end in mind. Every leader must ask themselves, what do I need from this organization? How do I, what personally want to achieve? Because there, there is no um, separation between individual goals and organizational goals. If someone wants to achieve financial um, um, objectives, the organization is the vehicle to achieve their financial objectives. If you want to be rich and you are leading an organization, then the organization should be the vehicle to help you be rich one way or another. If you want to be famous, then the organization should be the vehicle that will help the leader be famous, right? So in this case, the, we cannot separate the leadership mission and vision from the organizational mission and vision. They should match. And in many organizations, we find a mismatch here. And this is the main reason, the reason number one of causing um, the conflict or confusion in an organization is where there is a mismatch between organizational mission and vision set by the founders and between the leadership mission and vision, which sometimes might mismatch. So that's the first reason. Second reason where confusion happens and mismatch happens is lack of priorities. So when we think of priorities in terms of what? Many people would say, I have priorities, my priorities are clear. Great. And of course, when we mention or when we take a pen and a paper and we mention what are your priorities? And we hear since we are, uh, you know, every year we are in January. So every year uh, people will say New Year's resolution and priorities and all of that. People are very good in writing the priorities. However, when we mention priorities here, 
we mentioned about what replaces what. So, for example, when we look at uh, people's priorities, the very common question you ask them, what are your priorities, family or work? They say you cannot because they compete, they complete each other. So it's not about family or work. Family is part of work, work is part of family. But on the priority list, they shouldn't. One of them should replace the other in case there is an emergency. So, for example, if there is a family emergency and the work emergency, which one are you going to attend to? You cannot say they are the same. And you cannot say that work completes family. No, no. If you have to attend an emergency situation at work or with family, which one will you choose? So it is based on this repla replacing um, um, uh, equation. You keep on writing that. So write your list, write your list down, like we mentioned here, and then start asking yourself which one replaces which. So you will keep on this replacement equation until you reach something which is going to be number one on the top that will not be replaced by anything. Then this becomes your top priority. Then the second is being is able to be replaced by what? By the first. And the third is should be replaced by the second and by the first. So in order to set proper priorities, it needs to be based on replacement equation. What can replace what in case of similar urgency? What are you going to do in terms of urgency? You have to replace one by the other until you reach the ultimate irreplaceable um, uh, item, which will be your top priority. That's the way of setting the right priorities for an organization. Now, third reason for why um, organizations lack direction is when they don't have a plan. When we look at the plan, is it um, the way that you write on, on the paper? Is this the plan that we are talking about? Frankly, uh, the plan that we are talking about is plan based on how to use all the resources that you have in the organization. Many leaders would look at uh, the plan from their own perspective, neglecting that each single member of the organization plays a part in that plan. And actually, it all depends on the brains, because the brains of the organization, the idea comes collective. There is something called collective thinking. So if uh, you want to establish direction, grab the people around you, because each one has a piece of the puzzle and they have um, a certain view of something that's happening in the organization. So if you want to move the organization, take the analogy of moving a ship. The captain is on top, but he actually needs the opinions of people in the engine room, people in the galley, people in um, uh, you know the maintenance, because if I want to go a long direction, I need to check that my engines can take it and they don't need maintenance. And I also need to check that I have enough food uh, for the, um, uh, the, 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 the crew and the people on the, on the ship. And I also need to check that my maintenance team have enough spare parts and all of that in order for me, if I carry maintenance on the way, then I still have um, uh, uh, maintenance parts and all what I need, spare parts and all of that in order for me to reach the journey. So when we say about the plan, we mentioned the collective plan or the collaborative plan. Because can this change my direction? It can help me, of course, through the way. Many um, organizations and many leaders think that a direction is a straight line between one point and the other. And this is not true. Because as we can see uh, here, that the direction sometimes, I know where I'm going, so I know the goal. But I might be going through a loop in order to reach the goal. I don't have to reach it straight line. I might be going through a loop. I might do, be doing stops on the way. So establishing direction for the organization is very important because I know the goal, but I might go this direction. So if I'm going this direction and this is my goal, am I going away from my goal? No, I might be doing a tactical change in order to move like this, to avoid some obstacles and then go back and then reach my goal. How will I know this? I can only know it if I involve the people with me who are involved in um, uh, looking at several dimensions and different directions than the way I'm looking. Exactly like the captain of the ship, he sees a different view and a different dashboard than what other people would see in different levels of the ship. The reason number four for losing uh, direction in, in an organization is the contingency. What happens? And I, when I ask my question, what if? It's very important to have um, mitigation and contingency plan. 
Many people would talk about having plan A, plan B, plan C. Some people would hate plan B saying that I should make plan A work. But the fact is risk management is very important in, in any organization. And when we look at risk management, there needs to be some sort of acceptable risk. And there will be risks that I can accept. And I say, I cannot do anything about it. I'll just accept it and keep it. There will be risk that I will try to avoid. And this is the example when we mentioned that sometimes I will go this way in order to go back to this way. And this is not missing direction, despite many people would see you are moving in the wrong direction, but I'm moving towards the right goal. So that's a very important point to look at. Sometimes there, will need, there needs to be a risk that needs to be transferred. So how do I transfer risk to someone else or how do I transfer risk away from the organization so I don't have personally to deal with it if it happens? Um, like sometimes outsourcing and, and all of that, sometimes people would outsource um, uh, certain functions in order to transfer the risk because I don't have the capacity to deal with that um, right now. And then some risks I will have to reduce and I will have to have a plan to reduce this risk or mitigation uh, um, to, to reduce the risk. It's very important and it also helps the direction of the organization because when something goes wrong, people might change the direction but go towards the goal. Again, how would you know that I'm not losing focus to my goal? Only if I have a contingency because if I keep on bumping into things that I did not plan, I might be ending up moving completely away from my goal. I don't need to lose focus from my goal. So when something goes wrong, I would need to um, ensure that I'm moving in the right direction. How will I do that? Again, it's a collective brain thinking of different risks in the organization that maybe the leader might not see from only his um, dashboard. The last reason for losing direction in an organization is when a leader does not align resources or what does not motivate or engage staff. Like we mentioned, the organization is not self-moving, it needs people around it. So if the leader is disengaged from the team, if the leader does not properly motivate and move the team with him or her, then the leader would be moving in one direction and the organization might be moving in a different direction. And you can see this disconnection of direction from in, in various organizations when, for example, the leader would preach about values and customer service, but the team, serve, the team at the front line are doing completely the opposite actions in terms of customer service, and they are the front line of the organization. So this connection between the leader and the followers need and engagement, continuous engagement, needs to be always established to ensure that the organization is moving in the right direction. So um, in this um, uh, episode, we spoke about the third uh, most destructive leadership trait, which is lack of leadership direction. Um, if you're a leader listening to me, please uh, look at those five areas and try as much as possible to work on them to ensure that you have a clear direction as a leader where people are following you. And also the followers have, a cl have clarity uh, with regards to your direction and what exactly you want them to achieve uh, in the organization. Um, I hope this was useful. Please don't forget to share and uh, subscribe and support uh, the continuity of uh, free education. Thank you and we see you in the next episode.